In this video, we will look at an example of time fences. So let's look at the question at hand. Use the lead times shown next to each component to determine the demand time fence at the lead time required for final assembly and the planning time fence at the cumulative lead time required to make the earliest purchase commitment. So this is a bomb given to us. A is the end item and you have multiple sub assemblies and then you have the final components which are to be procured. So based on this and the lead time that has been given to us, we have been given certain conditions to find out the demand time fence and the planning time fence. So the first part is to find out the demand time fence. So let's first look at demand time fence. Now let's first recall what is demand time fence. Now, demand time fence is the time period closer to the current period where the quantity being assembled or manufactured should not undergo changes unless it is absolutely necessary. So if you recall from the fundamentals of time fence video, let's say this is your current period. So this part here is the demand time fence it can be two weeks or one week etc and this part here let's say up to eight weeks is the planning time fence so demand time fence is where you want to do very very minimal changes now the question says that the demand time fence should be set at the lead time required for the final assembly. So lead time required for the final assembly. Final assembly is A. And in order to assemble A using B and C, you need a lead time of one week. Now, if we try to understand this as per the definition, demand time fence should allow very, very less changes. And as you notice, as long as we have not assembled B and C together, we still have the flexibility to use them in other final products. However, once we start assembling A using B and C, if we make any changes to the quantity of A, especially reduction, then there could be wastage of the assembled part A. Hence, any changes are better avoided during this period. So the demand time fence is equal to one week. Now, there is one more concept which I think we need to understand. See, as the company completes its processing of the stages on a bomb, so let's say it has purchased G and then it has to assemble F or manufacture F using G. Then it has to purchase D. So as the company goes on towards the higher stage in a bomb, it commits itself to more cost and fewer alternatives. So you are basically committing to more cost. You are incurring more cost and very few alternatives. So if you have G available, which is not yet converted into F, you can use G for something else. But once you have 
created f then f may have some limited options and so on as you go on above towards the end item therefore the cost of making changes increases and the company's flexibility decreases as production gets closer to the delivery time so that's a concept which is very valuable to understand now let's move to the second part which is the planning time fence now planning time fence is also time period with restrictions on changing the quantity being manufactured however it is less rigid and a little longer than the demand time fence so as we have seen here it is after the demand time fence it is less rigid and longer typically longer than the demand time fence now in this example we have been given that the planning time fence should be set to the duration between the earliest purchase and the completion of the final product so as we have been given the lead times required to assemble and then manufacture each of these components we want to find the longest duration between the purchase commitment and the final end product assembly now let's determine the end to end duration of the earliest purchase till the final product completion so here we will list all the time paths for each component in the bomb so the first path is going to be d b a so d b and a now let's find out the duration of this path so we have to add up the lead times of all of these so 3 plus 2 plus 1 so this is 6 weeks now let's take the next one next one will be e b a now this will be 6 plus 2 plus 1 so this will be 9 weeks the third one will be g f c a so this becomes 3 plus 1 plus 3 plus 1 so this is 3 plus 1 4 plus 4 8 weeks and the last path is d c a so d c a this will be 3 plus 3 plus 1 so 3 plus 3 plus 1 which is 7 weeks so here the longest path is eba which has a total duration of 9 weeks so the planning time fence should be set to 9 weeks